What would be more common, a child getting heart inflammation from a COVID infection or from taking the vaccine? People are worried about heart inflammation post-vaccine. Heart inflammation post-COVID is higher. It is higher in all age groups, whether it's teenagers and older people, right? And um, there is some discussion about long COVID. It's hard to know exactly what long COVID is and how frequent it is and what it's going to mean for children, mm -hmm. right? But still, I would say that if the safety of the vaccine is shown to be there in Health Canada's judgment, then I still think the vaccine will probably be the safer choice for most children than getting actual COVID. There's something we really need to clarify, and it's the difference between long COVID and this multi-system inflammatory syndrome that happens post-COVID as well. Uh, because that is a condition that we've recognized and we know and we've had cases over almost 300 here in Canada where it's quite a severe illness that happens within weeks of having a COVID disease. And it's very severe, brings kids to the ICU and is what we call this post-COVID syndrome. Mm -hmm. And that we're, we're looking at estimates, but we think it could be anywhere from one in 3,000 to one in 100,000. A lack of long-term safety data is another concern that so many parents are talking about. Could this have effects on my child's development? Could it cause cancer, infertility? You know, these vaccines have now been rolled out to over 3 billion people on the planet, and we have not seen any extraordinarily rare side effects um, that you would expect to see when you vaccinated that many people. Tens of millions of, of teenagers have been vaccinated in North America so far, and we have, as yet, seen no detectable signal even relating to fertility or hormonal problems in, in younger adults and in teenagers. So I think it is extremely unlikely that there will be any fertility concerns whatsoever. Biologically, those things can't be affected by what's in the vaccine. And that's why we're reassured that long-term, even if we don't have data uh, for 20, 30 years yet. I think that's where scientists are really uh, convinced because we know, we know how hard it is to alter human genetic material and nothing in this vaccine component is able to do that. Does natural immunity last longer? We know a couple of things. One, we know it doesn't last as long as vaccine immunity. Mm -hmm. So in people who have had the infection, the risk of getting a second infection begins to increase at about three months. Whereas with vaccine, what we see is that protection, even in older people, it uh, goes out to six, nine, and even 12 months. Why aren't other countries vaccinating children under 12? We are in the fortunate position of having adequate vaccine supply for our most fragile people. And that's why we are able to vaccinate younger uh, children and teenagers. How rigorous is, is the safety part of putting a vaccine, you know, to the population? Vaccines are about the safest medical intervention that exists. So the, the, the amount of testing and quality control that goes into the production and evaluation of vaccines is more rigorous than, than for anything else, than for any antibiotic, than for any heart medication, for any anti-inflammatory, any of these things, right? And so vaccine safety is not perfect, as we know. But I think, okay, if you're going to trust anything in medicine, you trust vaccines first because those are the safest interventions that we have.